Hi, and welcome back to this second hour of Focal Point on AFR Talk. Brian Fisher is my name. Great, uh, glad to have you in the conversation. And I want to begin this second hour by talking about the possibility. Well, why don't we start with, uh, let, let's get some sound bites kind of out there so we can make that part of the discussion. Let's grab uh, clip number three. This is uh, Barack Obama, and uh, he's trying to make it very clear that this is not Iraq and it's not Afghanistan, and everybody's out there saying that. Everybody's saying this is not Iraq, this is not what, what's, what, what, but nobody's explaining what the difference is. Haven't anybody tell us what is different about this than going into Iraq, going into Afghanistan, well, apparently it's because the strategy is going to be so much more limited, which means it's not going to accomplish anything. Here is Barack Obama telling us why this is not Iraq and not Afghanistan. The key point that I want to emphasize to the American people, uh, the military plan that uh, has been developed by our Joint Chiefs and that uh, I believe is appropriate is proportional. It is limited. It does not involve boots on the ground. This is not Iraq, and this is not Afghanistan. This is a limited, proportional step that will send a clear message not only to the Assad regime, but also to uh, other countries that may be interested in testing some of these international norms, uh, that there are consequences. It gives us the ability to degrade Assad's capabilities when it comes to chemical weapons. Uh, it also uh, fits into a broader strategy that we have uh, to make sure that uh, we can bring about, over time, uh, the kind of strengthening of the opposition and the diplomatic and uh, economic and political pressure required so that, uh, ultimately, we have a transition uh, that can bring peace and stability not only to Syria but to the region. I want to uh, catch there that the difference between Iraq and Afghanistan, he says this is not going to involve boots on, on the ground. So he's making that point, no boots uh, on the ground. Uh, let's grab clip number five, Rob, and have that ready to go. Uh, John Kerry, his own Secretary of State, begs to differ with him. You know, that this is like Keystone Cops. I mean, it's like they're not even talking to each other. It's like they're both just speaking off the cuff. John Kerry is making stuff up. He's just talking off the top of his head. President Obama is doing the same thing. So you've got two people talking about what our military strategy is in Syria, their messages aren't coordinated. They're not talking to each other. And so naturally the American people are confused. I mean, they don't know who really is in charge here. They don't know what the plan is, and they don't know who uh, to believe. But again, what I want you to observe in what President Obama said is uh, that this is proportional. It's limited. In fact, they've made it very clear that they're not going to put boots on the ground. That's what Obama says. We're not going to do it. John Kerry begs to differ. We'll play that in a second. But we talked about this yesterday that military experts have said, look, if you if you want to take care of these chemical weapons, the only way you can do it is you've got to send troops in there. You cannot bomb these chemical weapons depots because you will disperse this nerve gas, these neurotoxins into the air. You'll kill as many people trying to neutralize these chemical weapons as uh, Assad did, if he did it. And as I've said, there's good evidence now that this was actually done by the rebels, or at least there's a severe question about where this is really coming from. Uh, so there's no way to neutralize these chemical weapons if you don't put troops in there. Uh, President Obama does not want to bring about regime change. He doesn't want to depose Assad, although I think that's what he wants to do. He wants the opposition to depose Assad. So again, he'll keep his fingerprints off of it. That's why he wants to strengthen the opposition. He said it in that sound bite himself. We want to strengthen the opposition. Who's the opposition in Syria? Well, it's Al-Qaeda, seven of the nine groups, radical Islamist in nature. And again, President Obama citing international norms, international norms. He used that phrase in this sound bite, international norms, as if what is guiding us is not what is in it. Well, I mean, what's not guiding us is not whether we have national interests at stake, not whether we have the interests of the United States at risk here, but these vague international norms, whatever they happen to be. Now, here is John Kerry, clip number five, 
saying that business about boots on the ground, what Obama's saying, we don't want boots on the ground, we're never going to put boots on the ground, forget all about that. We're going to keep that option available. Let's listen. Uh, Mr. Chairman, it would be preferable not to, not because the, 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 there's any intention or any plan or any desire whatsoever to have boots on the ground. Now, I think the president will give you every assurance in the world, as am I, as, as the Secretary of Defense and, and the chairman. But in the event Syria imploded, for instance, or in the event there was a uh, 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 threat of a chemical weapons cache falling into the hands of uh, al-Nusra or someone else, and it was clearly in the interests of our allies and, and all of us, the, the British, the French, and others, to prevent those weapons of mass destruction falling into the hands of the worst elements, I don't want to take off the table an option that might or might not be available to a president of the United States to secure our country. So, so President Obama says no boots on the ground. It does not involve boots on the ground. John Kerry, we do not want to take off the table an option, boots on the ground, that might uh, be necessary to the president of the United States. Now, one of the issues... Number to call, by the way, if you want to join our conversation is 888-589-8840, 888 Now, it's very clear from the Constitution and from the debate at the Constitution over the power of Congress to declare war that the only exception to that is if the United States is under imminent attack and the president, as commander-in-chief, needs to deploy the military to protect us from an imminent attack. That is the one basis on which the, the president does not have to go to Congress. Now, he does have an obligation to go to Congress right after he does it and explain the threat and explain why he did what he did and then get authorization for any future activities to neutralize that threat. So if the president could say that we are under imminent threat as a nation then he would have some reason to justify the deployment of troops. He doesn't clip four. Rob, here's President Obama. We're not imminently threatened. We may not be directly imminently threatened by what's taking place in a Kosovo or a Syria or Rwanda in the short term, but our long-term national security will be impacted in a profound way and our humanity is impacted in a profound way. And so I think it's important for us to get out of the habit in those circumstances. So President Obama said, look, I can't, I mean, he's admitting here, he didn't realize what he's doing, but he's admitting here that he cannot claim that exception to the war powers authority of Congress, the exception that we are imminently threatened. That's the only circumstance under which a president does not need to go to Congress before he deploys the military. He has to re repel an immediate, impending, imminent attack on the safety and security of the United States. President Obama, we are not directly, imminently threatened. Therefore, he's got no authority to go to war without Congress. Back in two.